Hello everyone, so welcome to today's video. Today is a fun video. I shared a look on Instagram that I was wearing. It was a post about the lip combo, which I felt like was the perfect Barbie lip combo. And it truly is beautiful. And I got a request from a lovely follower there on Instagram to do a look and that's what we're doing today. I decided to create the tutorial and the look again so that I can walk you through it step by step with every product that I use. We're going to make some tweaks along the way because when you do a look more than once, you kind of sort of change some things and I really do truly feel like today it looks even better than it did on Instagram. The full look is giving that kind of Barbie fantasy with the purple on the eyes, we're layering some colors, it's a duochrome, it's beautiful. The lip, the cheek, the skin, it's the Barbie vibes. And everybody's all about Barbie, right? So, I hope you will enjoy this look. If you wanna see how I did this look, then just keep watching. Okay, so I already have my eyebrows done. That takes a lot of time, so I went ahead and knocked that out before filming. And I do have my MAC Painterly Paint Pot on my eyes as my eyeshadow base. So now that those steps are taken care of, I can move into the complexion. So I'm going to start with a little bit of the Cali Ray So Blown Primer. And it doesn't really matter which primer I use under the foundation that I'm going to show you that I've been testing out. I have a sample of this foundation and I was blown away from the first time that I used it. So I have that kind of all blended in. I use my fingers to just really massage that into the skin. It makes the skin really feel really silky and smooth. And I haven't had any issues with this particular foundation kind of acting weird or doing anything kind of strange with primers. Glowy ones, mattifying ones, no primer, basic primers. It really does work with a lot of things. I got the Soft Matte Complete Foundation Sample from NARS when I placed an order at Sephora and I talked about the new stuff that I bought in my last Sephora haul video. I, let me just start applying this was just blown away. I literally am scraping the inside of this little plastic <laughs> sample because I love this foundation. This looks a little bit more pink if I compare it to Gobi. Gobi has a little bit more yellow. So I have both colors in my cart and I'm not sure which one I'm going to actually end up buying, but I am gonna buy this foundation for sure. I like to blend it with my brush. I've also done it with a sponge, and it's really, really beautiful. It blends in like an absolute dream. It is a little light, if you see the rest of my body. I do have to make it darker with some bronzer. But this actually <laughs> looks like a legitimate filter on your face. It is matte, but it's soft. It looks like a satiny kind of veil over the skin. It doesn't settle into pores. It doesn't feel drying. It doesn't look drying. It really is such an incredible formula. I like to take my sponge that's slightly damp and just kind of push that into the skin. And yes, I know it looks crazy and it looks light. We're gonna add some bronzer. From here, I'm gonna move into concealer. Starting off with my Huda Beauty Faux Filter in the shade 2.1 and Meringue. I'm gonna mix that with a little bit of the Magic Touch from ABH in shade three, which is a little darker. The two together gives me the perfect color for me right now. Using my sponge to blend this out. Then I'm gonna set everything under the eyes with my Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder to give me that flawless, filter effect as well, just like the foundation, just to make everything look super smooth and flawless under the eyes. This is one of my favorite setting powders. It's amazing. If you can get past the scent, it's incredible. Then for bronzer, in that post that I did on Instagram, I was wearing the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Bronzer. I love this stuff. It's so good. I wear shade 100. Give it a good shake. It comes in a glass bottle that's slightly frosted a bit and a dropper. Some people dislike the dropper. I don't really have an issue with it. Um, I've been using this quite a bit. And yes, there's some product around the very top of the opening of the glass, but it's not seeping off on the edges and it's not dripping down on the side. So I don't have problems with it. 
but it is something to note if you don't like those sort of dropper type of products. You can get past the packaging. The formula is amazing. Truly just incredible. The best liquid bronzer that I have used. That day that I did the whole Barbie fantasy look <laughs> that I was playing around with makeup, I was mixing different things and I used two different blushes to give me a really pretty glow. They're not necessarily the traditional Barbie pink, so I'm going to do a more Barbie pink today, but I will show you what I was wearing just in case you wanted to recreate exactly what I was wearing. I mixed the Gucci blush. This is in the shade called Bright Coral, and it's a beautiful classic coral shade. It's a satin formula. It's not completely shimmery, and it's not completely matte. It's a beautiful kind of Again, a blurred effect, and I think that kind of adds to that sort of perfected skin that we associate with the Barbie doll. Like, it's just really pretty. So I had that, and then I went over the top of that with the Laura Geller Baked Blush and Brighten in Tropic Hues. This one has a veining of multiple different colors. A champagne kind of peach, a lilac, a nice pinky berry color. So all of these swirled together gives you the most beautiful soft pinky glow. So this is that kind of satiny finish and when you swatch all these together it gives you that pink color without it being too bright and Barbie doll pink but it's not too dark or it's not so light and pastel looking even though it may come off light on camera and I'll show you this as a sort of blush topper today. I'm going to start with Persona Bubble. This is a bright bubblegum pink color and I think it's going to look really beautiful on the cheeks. So I'm going to just kind of wipe off my brush from yesterday and just take a little bit of this. So we're going to slightly tweak that look just a little bit just to incorporate more of that brighter pink cheek. With this Persona Bubble, I have it in the stick form as well. It gives you such a beautiful kind of flush to the skin, very natural, even though this looks really bright and bold, it is very flattering on the skin. The good thing about the stick form of this color is that you can also use that on your lips if you wanted to. I always go back in with my brush that I use to apply my foundation or if I use a sponge, go back with the sponge and really press that into the skin and blend that so that it looks just more seamless and more blended into the foundation. So I'm going to show you the Tropic Hues that I wore in the Instagram post over the top. And I'm just gonna take the tiniest little bit to give me a bit of a sheen because that bubble in the powder form is more matte. This is gonna add a touch of radiance to the skin, but not by much, just a little bit. Do you see that glow? And it kind of almost gives you highlighter optional skin. So we gotta do a little highlight. I'm gonna use something very soft, very light. And I just absolutely adore the French Vanilla Baked Highlighter from Laura Geller. That's what I was wearing in the Instagram post. It was just very light. And over that Tropic Hues, you're going to kind of see a bit more of a glow. Do you see how that just instantly made the tops of my cheekbone just kind of come out some more? And I absolutely adore this highlighter. So the way I started that look in the Instagram post was taking some of my blush, which was the Gucci, and applying that with a fluffy brush through the crease and kind of up higher into my blush. These Gucci blushes are for cheeks and eyes. So I decided to do that because the whole idea was to do something kind of monochrome. And then as I was playing with products and layering, it just went to a whole different spectrum of what I was envisioning, which is the beauty of playing with product and just you know, experimenting. So I'm going to do that because I felt like it did add something to the eye. So I'm going to take my same blush brush and I'm going to sort of pinch it so it fits into my crease and just pick up a little bit of that. So to recreate this look at home, all you need to do is use your normal pinky corally blush. If you're wearing one, just kind of take it through the crease area and blend it out. And it adds a bit of that coral kind of feel and look to the crease area. I'm going to take two different colors to set my primer before I go in with the eyeshadow colors. So I'm gonna use a fluffy brush 
And I'm going to reach for a light white color and a soft peach. And I'm going to mix both of those together. This is the uh, Master Mattes palette from Makeup by Mario. But any white and ivory color peach would work. So I'm going to take that and go all the way onto my lids, inner corner to outer corner, just real quick, so that nothing catches and sticks to that paint pot that I already applied. I went into the ABH Cosmos palette, and I started off with the shade called Space Dust, which is the lightest in the matte row of this palette, and it is a warm, light tan. Using a Refer 15, I apply that to my crease. Then I'm taking a Refer 26, which is a really large pencil style brush, and taking that same space dust and going down into the lower lash line area. And I am applying this pretty thick and making sure that it kind of tapers and blends out towards the space dust that's in the crease. So from here, I was sort of experimenting, and this is where I'm going to tell you you have to kind of trust the process because I wasn't really feeling it myself, but after the liner mascara, it really truly came together and it was beautiful. But it was one of those that really needed to sort of, you have to have some patience because it takes a little bit of layering a few different shades. So I started off taking the shade called Mercury. If you have this palette, it is a very shimmery metallic gunmetal gray color. This one does not have any duochrome as the other ones do. So if you don't have this palette, anything that's dark gray and smoky with a shimmer finish, a metallic finish would work for this step. I use my Refer number two brush, which is a flat eyeshadow brush, to apply some of this to my lids. And this color is extremely potent. It is very, very intense. I just can't get over the pigment of that color. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's insane. So once I have that color evenly applied from inner corner to outer corner, I want to use my finger. I was using my ring finger to blend out those edges as if I was applying a cream shadow. So that same sort of blending technique to make sure that it's all the way up towards the crease, but not bringing it up too high because I don't want this to be coming up into this area. I want to keep it mostly on my lids and you'll see why in a moment. But I also want to make sure that that edge is really smooth and it doesn't look like a strip of color. With nothing on it, and I'm just making sure again that I'm blending this edge out a little bit so that it's not, again, looking kind of weird. When you look down, you don't want to see just a strip of color. It needs to be blended and wrought into the natural crease of your eye. In the very inner corner, I do have a little bit of a gap where there isn't any product there because I'm going to use one of the duochromes to highlight the inner part of the eye. So from here, I also took that same gunmetal color down to the lower lash line, and I used a very small kind of dense brush for this, and it applied quite a bit of product. It's a 210 from BK Beauty. It's a very, very small brush. So I'm going to take just a little bit of that color and work that into the lower lashes. Pretty thick on this outer corner and again just tapering it as I work towards the inner part of the eye. Okay, that's it for the lower lash line. Now here is where the true magic of this look comes into play. I took the shade called Supernova, which is that really beautiful dual chrome that's pink. It's lavender, it's kind of goldy, it's just such a beautiful shift. Do you see that? It looks like it's just unbelievable. So I took my finger and I just tapped this directly over the gunmetal color and it's going to transform this shade into the Barbie magic. And I just kind of tap. That way I don't lift too much of the gray and I don't get any fallout either. Okay. 
you just instantly can change the look by just adding that topper and now it looks like a smoky purple color it doesn't look as gray right so it's kind of like a Barbie purple right <laughs> I don't know I like it I thought it was cool and I was just playing with color and it ended up really um, surprisingly for the inner corner I'm taking that same supernova color with a very small precise brush a reference number three and this is gonna go right into that inner part that's kind of bare and down into this inner like tear duct inner corner highlight area I do want to add a little bit more warmth to my lower lashes so what I'm gonna do is take that same pencil brush the 26 with some more space dust and I'm gonna go just underneath the gray a little bit again to continue blending and pulling that color down just a little bit thicker and adding an element of warmth right under that gray color which is quite cool toned and back to the 15 brush from refer which is a really big fluffy crease brush with a little bit more of the space dust after I have everything complete and I'm just going around creating a halo around this entire look you could go back in with that blush if you did that little technique like I did at the beginning you can go back with a little bit more of that warmth so it's time for some eyeliner I used my makeup by Mario master pro pigment in black and I did a very thick line of that I will warn you that when you use these colors from the ABH Cosmos because they are their duochromes when you go on to your liner whether it's a liquid or pencil you're gonna pick up some of that sort of pigment that's there with the eyeshadow so it honestly doesn't look black it ended up looking very dark almost like a navy type of eyeliner but it was black starting off so that's the only drawback of using these duochromes is that you do lift some of it when you go to apply the eyeliner So now that my liner is on and I've tight lined with the same black eyeliner, I decided to go over it with a little bit of a really dark black eyeshadow. I want to take a flat brush and I'm going to use the black that's in my Makeup by Mario palette, which is very, very intense and dark. And just kind of stamp that right over the top to give it a little bit more intensity, but also to add a little bit more darkness so the final step is to complete the eyes with mascara I used the Milani the highly rated anti-gravity mascara I used this in my full face of drugstore makeup that I posted I think two weeks ago and I've been testing it on and off just to kind of formulate my opinions it's not terrible but it's not my favorite I want a little bit more of something a little bit more impact so I'm gonna go with my OG classic the Pillow Talk Mascara from Charlotte Tilbury. It's one of my absolute favorite formulas, but this is the one that I wore in the Instagram post, but I'm gonna do this one today because it's going to, it's just gonna give me everything that, that you need. It's gonna give you length, volume, and drama. So the lip combo is really what I was kind of going for on Instagram when I was posting the whole Barbie fantasy. I feel like that really classic Barbie pink color on the lip and the purple, on the eyes I don't know I just thought of the Barbie it everybody's doing all things Barbie now because of the movie and I just felt like this combo was just perfect it gave me that Barbie pink lip without being too bright and over the top and it was just that perfect kind of medium pink color it's just it was just a classic look so I have on a little bit of the makeup by Mario um, this is the Pink Glow Moisture Plumping Lip Serum that I put on midway through getting ready today so that my lips were kind of prepped and hydrated for the main lip product. So I started off with the Pillow Talk Lip Cheat Lip Liner from Charlotte Tilbury. This is one of my favorites. I lined and I filled in mostly my lip that day and I did the same today. Then I layered the Pillow Talk Lip Blur, also from Charlotte Tilbury. I adore this formula. It's a beautiful matte finish. I love the applicator, so I layered that over the top. Oh, that applicator 
it's got like a really pointy end and it's a different shape to your typical doe foot and it makes it perfect for applying this formula. I took my finger and I blended those colors together and I blurred out that edge too. And then one more lip product. I know it's a process, but I think this really does give it that Barbie pink, that magenta kind of vibe, but still wearable. You could definitely stop here. I've done this combo with the lip liner and the lip blur very often. I love it. It's a pretty pink color that's very flattering, but we're going to take it up a notch. We're going to use the House Labs. This is the primary lip oil, and I just kind of dabbed it a little bit. Just kind of tap. And this is going to turn into a brighter pink color. And it's like magic. Right before your eyes, it starts to turn this really pretty pink shade. And there is that classic Barbie pink look for the lips, but in a very wearable, everyday kind of way. I love this. Like, I seriously can do this same lip look every single day and absolutely adore and never feel like I want to change it up or that I want to try something different. It's beautiful. But we have to do one last little finishing touch that I did for my Instagram post. I do this every single day that I do my makeup and it truly makes a difference. So I'm going to share it with you. I think I've talked about this before and I've demoed this, but I take the Airbrush Brightening Flawless Powder from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the white one. This one is in the fair medium. I take my setting brush from Real Techniques and I just sort of pick up some of that product. Tapping off the excess and I pat right through here, sides of the nose and up to sort of further brighten the under eye. Remove any fallout that I may have had. And it also blurs that line from where my blush is. If I got my blush a little too close to the nose, this powder is absolute perfection. I take whatever's left through the forehead, the chin. I go back in for a little bit more. Same thing. Tapping off the excess, I tap, not too hard to lift my concealer, but tapping to remove any fallout. And I press and then sweep so that it kind of blurs that edge of the blush. And it also helps sort of lift out here if I came down too far with my eyeshadow. Hit the center of the forehead again. You can go down the nose, chin. This powder is an absolute must. Like. Incredible. I have not found anything that can do what this does for me yet. And there you have it. That is my completed full Barbie fantasy look. And I hope you enjoyed it. I had fun recreating this look and I am glad to be wearing it again. I feel like it definitely is kind of smoky, but very sultry looking. And the purple with the pink, that Barbie lip, it just all comes together and looks so, so beautiful. And I really enjoy it. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And you can expand the description box for the list of products. I will also give you some other options for blushes, some recommendations for that Barbie look, some brighter ones, some more wearable in tone, so that everybody has an option for that Barbie cheek. And I will list the combo for the lips because I feel like those truly do give you that Barbie pink lip and it doesn't get any easier than that and it doesn't get any prettier. Like the lips look glossy, smooth, that matte lip just lays so beautifully over the lips and it doesn't settle and make your lips look dry or accentuate any lines. It's a really nice formula and yeah, I, I like the way this looks. It looks absolutely beautiful. The complexion, if you could see my skin in real life with that foundation from NARS, it's like mind blowing how it looks like I have that Instagram filter on my face, but I don't, I don't have any filters on my camera. This is my real skin and it looks beautiful. Like it's an immediate add to cart kind of product for sure in this video. So thank you so much for being here and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. You can follow me on Instagram. We can chat and be friends there. It's always going to pop up on the screen. Take care you guys. And I will talk to you very, very soon. Bye-bye.